everybody. Welcome to Three Minute Thursdays. It's Gerald Sars Phantom Rights News and the gossip packed into a short, sweet three minutes on everyone's favorite day. Naturally, that's a Thursday. It is one of my favorite times of the year where we get to take a look at the Veganuary campaign wrap up. We got statistics, we got data points, we got innuendo, and the answer to the age old question how many, how many vegans can you make with 32 employees and $1.9 million? As always, hit that subscribe button, turn on the little beep beep bell notification uh, so you get the uh, notification straight to your email that I made a video because I know you're all just waiting around for me to make videos. And, and also on the Instagram, Facebooks, and the Twitters. Um, also Patreon, we gave away 2,790 something or 720, I don't know, we gave over $2,700 to a sanctuary called Animals of Our World, which is like Cambodia's only vegan um, anti-speciesist rescue and sanctuary. Um, so it was exciting to send money over to them. If you want to join us for as little as two bucks a month, you can turn that $2 into $2,700. We all vote as to where that money goes. We send 100% of the money, I keep nothing. And it feels good to give away a bunch of money every month. So come on over and join us. Okay, first off, let me just give you a brief update out of Philadelphia that I'm really excited about. A bunch of folks have been fighting the um, horse-drawn carriage industry there for a while. We've had a few exciting updates from our friends at Revolution Philadelphia. A few months ago, it was announced that the, um, the horse-drawn carriage company had packed up and it looked like they were just done. So activists went to the local government and, and said, you know, it's time to put a ban in place here in Philly. They replied with, well, not until there's an electric carriage alternative. So some time passes and in steps this wealthy guy that hates horse-drawn carriages um, and says, yeah, I'll fund the alternative. So it looks like a ban finally could be coming to Philly. I think that's really exciting. Uh, there's a lot of grassroots effort going on there um, to make that happen. So best of luck. And as always, great job. Okay, let's talk Veganuary. And, and you know what that means? It's disclaimer time. Just so there's no misunderstandings, I would love to see a vegan world. I want everyone to be vegan. I think it's an important tool in our activist arsenal, this whole vegan outreach thing. But what I want vegan outreach to be is strategic so it can be the most effective. And in turn, we as a movement also can be the most effective that we can be. And currently, the best way I see that happening is by using vegan outreach as a tactic. One of many tactics that we would use as part of a pressure campaign. And I've talked about that a whole bunch and I'm happy to talk about it more, but not in this video. Instead, we're talking about Veganuary. So I think there's some positive things about it that, that I think are worth highlighting right, right off the bat about Veganuary. First, it's made up of a lot of people doing lots of work for animals. So regardless if you find Veganuary net positive or negative, it, it should be noted that people are working hard around the clock on it and they do it because they care. Two, whether you are a staunch anti-capitalist or you're really big on the green capitalism or you fall somewhere in between or outside of those, I don't really know. You have to admit they do a great job of outreaching companies and getting them on board, albeit mostly temporary, with putting new plant-based foods out there. And everyone loves a good plant-based food, all right? Uh, three, they look good. I mean, maybe it's just me and my designer brain, but, but they look slick, they look welcoming, and the message um, to an outsider is very clear. And to me, those are like the three big important check marks you got to hit to do good outreach or really to run any campaign. And if you want to hear my takes on the downsides or the negatives, in my opinion, stick around until the end or just like click this little thing and just drag it to the end and you'll figure it out. OK, so how did Veganuary fare in 2023? Let's take a look under the hood. This year they had 706,000 965 people globally sign up officially and pledge to try vegan for a month. Afterward, they sent out a survey to 558,502 people in which 16,829 people responded. That's like a 3% response rate, whether that's good or not. I'm not a statistician, but 3%, I believe, is a bit of a low return. But in sheer numbers, like for our movement, almost 17,000 people is is a pretty big pool, I think, for a survey on veganism. You're hard to find one much bigger. Now you can go online and look at the results and the demographics and all that info if you want, but here are the bits that, that stood out for me. 40% of the people said they did it for animals. 39% said they did it for either health or the environment, meaning 40% of the people were doing it, presumably, aligned with a vegan philosophy, as opposed to a plant-based diet. And I think that's important, right? Because the hope is that when presented with the information from something called Veganuary, uh, the actual message, the philosophy of veganism is apparent. But 64% of the people polled said they didn't maintain a vegan diet at all during Veganuary. And to me, that's like a pretty big one. Like if, if a decent majority of the people who sign up to your pledge don't actually do the pledge, that's like a bit of a red flag for me. And here's another red flag for me. What's left 
is 36% of the people who said they did maintain a vegan diet. Next, you have to factor out the people that were already vegan, because you know, you're not, they're not really changing anything, which according to the survey is about 3,000 people out of that total 16,000 respondents. Are you able to follow along? Sorry, this gets a, a bit wonky. That leaves us about 13,800 non-vegan respondents, and 36% and of that is 4,968 people. 4,968 people who said they did the vegan diet for the month. And of those people, 25% of them said they intend on continuing with a vegan diet. So all that to say, after signing up over 700,000 people to take the pledge, polling 558,000 people, only 1,242 said they were intending to stay vegan. So that, that's a number. It's pretty small. I mean, there's lots of ways we can read into it, right? Maybe the other 500,000 people who chose not to respond to the poll, maybe they were the ones who went vegan. Uh, they're out doing activism. They don't have time to answer polls. Or is it that a year-long campaign spent almost $2 million to get 1,242 people to intend to be vegan longer than a month? Or maybe it's something in between. You know, it's hard to tell. But that's the numbers that Veganuary released to us. But here is the interesting spin, and in my opinion, the depressing reality of Veganuary. So the silver lining according to the organization is that of the 11% of the people, which if my math is correct is 546 people, who said they would not or they were unsure if they would continue with veganism after Veganuary, 72% of those people said they were going they were planning on cutting out between like 50 to 75% or more animal products in the future. And just to break down the numbers, that's 393 people that have basically pledged to be reducitarians. So 69% of those 546 said they were likely to try veganism in the future, but you know, who's to tell? So what's their final takeaway? Counting all the participants who plan to continue to eat vegan or reduce their consumption by at least half, we end up with a whopping 78% who will make a significant dietary change in 2023. Okay, admittedly, I'm not great at math, right? If you've followed my videos for a while, it's not my forte, but I've done this like three times with a calculator and a computer and all that stuff. And if my numbers are correct, and if everyone answered their polls truthfully, almost $2 million was spent to get 1,275 people to at least be um, re reducitarian. Now, of course, we want to be able to extrapolate that data to the larger group in question. And with those percentages and figures, the campaign made roughly 42,000 reducitarians and vegans. But my unqualified opinion is that there are a whole lot of reasons over 500,000 people didn't respond to the survey. Spam filters maybe were being over ambitious or didn't like veganism, or people didn't have time, or people were embarrassed that they didn't do something they pledged to do, or people signed up that did it on a whim and didn't actually intend on fully participating. Again, like unqualified statement here, but I think people who have done something that feels positive in their lives like going vegan or trying vegan, are much more likely to go tell people about it, particularly people that may have influenced them to try it. So in this case, that would be filling out a survey. So I would guess that the people who were happy with their outcomes to a certain extent were the ones who predominantly filled out the survey. And those who were embarrassed or felt peer pressure or just couldn't be bothered because they didn't care that much, I think those people were potentially uh, the people who didn't fill out the survey. All that to say, meaning, I feel like those who returned the survey probably represent the rosiest of outcomes when the data is extrapolated, but it isn't really the reality of the situation. I think if we had like a bigger picture, making 42,000 producetarians and vegans would be a very generous uh, figure. That would be the high end of success for this year's Veganuary. But in reality, probably would be much lower. So there you go. And, and all this to say, again, like I'm all for doing vegan outreach. I think the folks who work on this campaign are doing it for the right reasons. Uh, I think they care, and I think they work really hard at it. But but we do have to call out, you know, the elephant in the room in, in that this really isn't about veganism at this point. It's not even really about plant-based eating. Like, yeah, that's the pie-in-the-sky goal here, right? But but the survey and the campaign, it is about pushing reducitarianism. And if that's your thing, like, God bless. But we can't be fooling ourselves into, like, thinking that reducitarianism or flexitarianism has anything to do with animal rights or veganism, because it's rooted in welfareism at best, right? And I, I think we see ve Veganuary's style of outreach 
rooted in a lot of vegan outreach communities around the world. And over the years and decades, that style of outreach has eroded away the message of rights and liberation and veganism, and it's stripped away at the core of the philosophy of veganism. And that makes like achieving the actual goals that much harder. If anything, Veganuary should be a reminder to activists to assess you know, what your goals are and what your theory of change is rooted in. Is it rooted in liberation or is it rooted in welfareism? We should assess our strategies and tactics and be able to differentiate between the two and, and how we can use them to bring about as much success as we can in the shortest amount of time. We should look at our budgets and assess our workloads and time investments and determine if we are actually putting all of those things to good use. And I think ultimately we need to be willing to have tough discussions where we challenge each other and we ask hard questions and we get hard answers. And we don't shy away from that because it's in those tough spaces where we find solid answers. And after we do all of that, of course, we need to keep fighting.